Hey Threadheads, welcome back. We're just going to do a quick little video tutorial today. Uh, we're going to be tying up this steelhead pattern. This one's called Dillon Creek Special and it was designed by Austin McWithy. And he originally designed this. There's two different variations. This is, I guess, the winter or the fall version. And there's also a summer version. And I'll explain a little bit about that. Just some of the differences in that as we go along. This one's designed for fishing the uh, Klamath River, uh, the lower, and uh, so let's just get into it. Don't forget to leave a comment down below and I'll get your name entered into the next draw that I do for some of the flies that we tie here on the channel. Alright, so for the hook, we're going to start off, we're just going to be using one of these Superfly salmon hooks. And uh, if you don't have Superfly, which I guess they don't make them anymore, you can go ahead and use your favorite salmon iron. That'll work well. For thread, I'm going to be using a uh, 70D Ultra Thread 70. Or an dot thread will work. I'm just going to start by tying on right in behind the eye. Close the loop of that hook. I'm just going to wind down. I just like to get down to the hook point in uh, not necessarily touching turns, but close to. I just don't want to really roll over into that bend a whole lot. So we're going to tie in a tail. Now the original here calls for uh, four pieces of gold crystal flash. I don't have any gold. Uh, but I do have some copper, so we're just going to sub that in. And what I've done is I've just taken one strand, one full strand, and just uh, folded it over a couple times. And we're just going to tie that in just a little bit past the bend of the hook. And we'll just pull up on that, make sure it gets up on top. And... The waist end here, we'll just tie this down. Try and keep it up on top of the hook shank if we can, just to keep things even. Just gonna trim that one up a little bit. So for the rest of the tail, I'm gonna add in a little bit of guinea fowl. So I'm just gonna strip off some of these fluffier fibers from the bottom and we're going to take um, maybe about a good half an inch worth of fibers off the stem we'll just roll those a little bit just so that they're not really uniform I like to get a little bit of color mixed in there and we'll tie those in so that they're about the same length as the uh, crystal flash. All right, there we go. Just tie that down, make sure that we got it right down to the end of where our thread is. Come back here, clean up any little bits. I'm gonna tie a butt onto this fly and I'm using a pink woolly bugger chenille. The original calls for a fluorescent red, and the um, was it the summer version calls for a chartreuse butt or green butt. So we just pulled off a little bit of the material off that core, and we'll just use our thread and grab that. We'll tie back to where our tail ends. We just want a little bit of material on here. We're just going to go about one and a half two turns just to put on a nice hot butt on the fly and we'll catch that couple turns of thread and we'll trim it off make sure you give yourself lots of room to work with there so you don't cut it off too short I like to pull out any of the fibers that I can here and then we'll just simply wrap back on that to secure it so 
So there, your butt's not too big, but still nice and flashy. You got a bit of an egg representation there. I'm gonna add a ribbing on here. Um, and I'm gonna link in the description, I'll, send, I'll put a link in there to the original fly pattern. I'm gonna ch change mine up a little bit, not enough to call it a variation, I, would, I don't think, but just a little bit. So the original uses a flat tinsel. I'm just switching out into an oval tinsel. So we'll tie that in, in behind the eye. And I like to tie it in underneath the hook shank as much as possible. We'll tie that right into our butt. For the body of the fly, we're going to be using a little bit of black chenille, just some regular standard black rayon chenille. Again, we'll just pull some of the fibers off the cord and that gives us a nice spot to tie in, nice and secure. Got that tied in right up to the butt and then we'll take our thread up to the eye. We'll leave ourselves a little bit of space. We don't want to crowd that head too much. I'm just going to go ahead and start wrapping that. And I just like to get that on fairly dense. So just like I'm wrapping like a polymer hackle or something, I'm just going to pull back on these fibers every time I wrap it. And that kind of helps create a denser body. Makes it a little bit more uniform as well. I think we can get one more wrap there. Tie that off and I like to go on top of that material. Pull the material back and then wrap underneath it. So trim it. Now we're going to take our ribbing material here. We're just going to wind it through. Just push it back and forth, just so it wiggles down in between those fibers of the chenille. We'll wrap it up here a couple times and then we'll twist it back and then that gets it locked into place. Trim it off. For the wing, I'm not sure if you caught it in the intro there, but basically we want these hackles. We're going to be using a golden badger here. We want these to swing away so that we've got uh, the hackles swooping down, swooping up away from the tail. So we'll measure those about a little bit longer than the length of the hook. And pull off the fibers there. Just put a couple loose wraps just to kind of keep it in place. Just till we get the uh, other hackles measured in. So you want to make sure you got your tips matched up as close as possible. We'll just measure those against the originals. Pull back all the fibers and then just tear them off. You want to just give yourself a little bit of extra stem to work with. Okay. So I'm going to have to adjust these a little bit. Just unwrap them. So that's basically how you want them to sit on there. Okay, so let's pinch those together. Give a couple loose wraps and I just like to pull that material 
into that eye a little bit. It's not sitting quite right. We got something messed up there a little bit. So in that case, we'll just unwind. We'll start again. So those got twisted up a little bit. So you want to make sure that the dull sides are sticking out here. There, that looks not too bad. Sometimes you can get away with tying them in all at once, and sometimes you gotta separate them, like we had to do in this case, so. There you can see they splay out away from each other. Just make a little bit of adjustment there until you got them in the spot where you like them. And then you can lock them down with a few extra thread wraps. All right, so let's just fold back these tips. Just make sure that those hackles are locked in place. Then we can come in and cut those out. One of those might have to stay in. All right, so last material on here. It's just a little bit of guinea fowl. We're gonna use that as collar on the fly. So we're just gonna pull back some of these fibers. We don't need a really heavy collar on here. One wrap is probably good. Two wraps, probably lots. Just tie that in, fold back the tip, lock that down. Then you can just pull that tip forward just to pull it off. And then you can just pull back all the fibers of the guinea. And we'll just wrap those around. I don't mind wrapping it forward a little bit. So I'm gonna come back and just lock down all those uh, tag ends over top of the stem. And now we just have to clean up the head a little bit. It's not too bad. Um, so on the summer version, they also mention that instead of doing a full collar, they just do a beard. And they also add a couple strands of the gold crystal flash as horns over top of the wing on this. So there you go. All we got left to do on that is just put a little bit of head cement a bit of a resin head. And 
You know, just a little bit of bone dry. There's the Dillon Creek Special. Thanks for watching.